Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 23 of Kerbal Space Program's Interstellar Quest. We've just delivered an important structural member to the Duna Express spacecraft. And upon docking, the whole thing starts rotating. And rather than attempt to arrest the rotation, I just decided it's better to undock the shuttle and depart since there's no need for us to be here. Unfortunately, the spacecraft does seem to want to slide forwards dangerously close towards those solar panels and I do not want to break them. So a bit of a burn brings us clear and sets us up for our return to the planet Kerbin. Now, we've landed this shuttle before, we've seen how stable it is. Well, it turns out that I updated uh, Ferrum Aerospace from 0.10 to 0.11 between this and that seems to have changed the aerodynamic properties and possibly made this shuttle not so good anymore. Uh, we're dealing a lot with mods here and strange things happen can happen between releases. But anyway, let old me show you how it went down. Okay, so we are really picking a lot of shock heating here, but I think I think we're on route, although we're going maybe a little fast. We might want to kill... I think we're going to have to kill our velocity just a little. Uh, wing temp tips are getting really hot. I don't know how hot these things can go before they break. I don't, I don't even know how they break. If they, Maybe they seize up and spin me out of control or something. But yeah, we're totally going to fly over. I'm going to try and turn just a little to... Whoa! No, I said turn a little. I, I'm actually... Tr I tried to pull up there and instead I kind of flipped sideways. Not good. Uh, the wingtips are just getting incredibly hot. I don't know if that's how hot this these things can survive, but... They do not seem to be performing particularly well. Good news is that even though I'm going very fast, I'm kind of low in the atmosphere. Oh, come on, upside down. I'm trying to get this thing straight. I really need to do a turn. Oh, no, 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 no. No, oh, reaching G limit. No, well, um, oh my God. Oh, wow, we're crushing these guys in the cockpit there. Well, good news is that random flip did seem to kill our velocity. Let's just, uh, try and get it well okay this is kind of hard gotta get it lined back up so it'll fly this thing should fly just fine i mean we've flown it before oh yeah there does seem to be this corkscrew instability with this if you start to do it it will tend to kind of orbit around the direction vector i'm not sure if it's because one of the wingtips progressively stalls but if i can just get it back on there we should be able to bring it back under control and i have faith i mean this is jebediah Okay, we're below 10 kilometers and falling at about 100. We have about 60 seconds to... Oh, wow, this is a flat spin. This is like a perfect flat spin. We At least we're rolling out of it. Thankfully, we have RCS. So that will give us some sort of thrust. But uh, 6 kilometers and we are still stalling with almost no control here. Spinning one way and then the other... Basically, our nose is kind of stuck at 90 degrees to the velocity vector, and I am not getting any control here. This is not good. Come on, down, 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 down. No, no, it gets pushed away. Oh, uh, crap. Uh, oh, wait. Um, hmm. Let me try the air brakes. Air brakes, air brakes, air brakes. Slow us down, slow us down. At least we'll crash more slowly. Air brakes. Actually, air brakes are... I think these are B9 air brakes are way too powerful. But uh, hey, they do see. Hey, got control again. I am now, in, I'm now diving straight towards the ocean instead of spinning out of control towards the ocean. Um, just question of whether I can pull out of this dive safely. Yes, one thousand meters to go. Oh, look at that Jebediah showing his skills. Now we just need to. Now we need to point ourselves over a piece of land. I do not think we can make the runway with the amount of energy we have left. But boy. Whew. I think I think we will get down fine. Uh, landing this should be okay, unless there's some new surprises. I mean, I don't know why we spun. I tested this thing repeatedly, and it seemed to fly great, so I don't know why I ended up in that uncontrollable spin. Okay, 400 meters up. 100 meters per second just seems to be just enough. And actually, you know, when you can see when I'm pitching, I'm getting like 2 Gs, so... I should be able to kill any vertical descent very quickly just by flaring and I'm using the RCS to kind of help cushion this a little. 
Ah, beautiful landing. Beautiful landing after and a, after a terrible, uh, terrible descent. But Jebediah will no doubt count it as a learning experience and return like a true trooper. I think we're going to have to do some more testing to figure out why that happened. Anyway, it's back to the rockets. We have a whole bunch of pieces to launch and, well, you don't need to watch the whole thing in detail. Suffice to say, we have a number of payloads that are going to be sent on rockets. Uh, I don't think there's any more that I plan to send using the shuttles except for perhaps a fuel run or two so to refuel things. Naturally, uh, well, there's going to be a bunch of fuel tanks I need to hit and hopefully I can manage it. Uh, but obviously sending these shuttles will depend on figuring out what Ferrum Aerospace did to make them completely unflyable. So yeah, this is uh, object number one. We are keeping the fairing on because this is designed to enter Duna's atmosphere and we're keeping the fa fairing in place as a, an aerodynamic feature because I think it looks cool and I want to have it pop off as it descends through the atmosphere. There will be another one that looks like this and we're attaching it to this position right now. Now, it turns out I'm going to reconfigure this a little but uh, the next thing I want to do is because I realized that that thing was too wide, this is going to be a spine that kind of sits down the middle. It's just basically a couple of long, it's like a 10 lo meter long fu um, fuselage section. And now this is kind of different because there's no actual thrust in the middle, it's only those external engines that have the, the thrust on them. The middle has like a probe section and the fuselage in there. It actually goes up rather flat, but that was mostly an accident. Regardless, it's a, you know, it does actually make it to orbit like this. And uh, we then ditch these external, we can ditch those when we uh, get up into orbit. See, the, there you see that we actually have the, the space probe in the middle there and the rockets on the outside. So there's really uh, only the orbital maneuvering system in the middle. The exterior is all the actual orbital insertion stuff. So, yeah, we do a quick uh, burn here to get ourselves more or less into a an orbit which is a little too high. So we turn around, slow ourselves down, bring those engines back into the atmosphere, and then immediately start using the RCS because, let's, let's face it, we're pointing backwards so we can adjust this. And as things happen, we end up actually pretty darn close to the target we are aiming for. It, it uh, is catching up on us at about 200 meters per second. And, well, it was actually one of the fastest docking maneuvers I did. It took me less than 40 minutes in total to get up close. Now, this thing is rather unwieldy because the whole thing is really, really long. But other than that, it's pretty easy to maneuver into location there. So we're going to have two of these long things contained in the... Um, in their shrouds there's going to be a second one that sits on the other side and this will neatly slide up the middle between them and uh, the rest of the spacecraft will be built following it uh, as it as it happens actually there's another thing that i need to do to turn this whole thing around also previous video people were asking why i didn't just move an astronaut inside the station and fold in the uh, radiators. Well, the reason I didn't do that was because the only habitation module in the station right now, or the spacecraft, is a crew can. And from a crew can, you cannot actually perform any actions. It is not a control uh, ca capsule. It is just a place to put crew. Anyway, dock this in here. And that leaves us with a semi-built spacecraft. And we can actually fold these things out. So... That's looking the part once again. This is going to be quite a long spacecraft. I think I might actually need to put on some more fuel at this rate. Um, I'm having problems with Kerbal Engineer, as I've said. But yeah, we're going to undock this uh, space probe, of course, this little space tug. And it's going to return to the atmosphere so that we do not pollute space. Instead, we're going to pollute some part of the planet with our monopropellant and high-tech components, no doubt containing heavy metals and other poisonous materials which will rain to Earth and uh, probably land in some children's playground somewhere. We are ready for the net final launch of the crew capsule to the Duna Express. And this is quite a heavy rocket. This spacecraft, oh, we're actually caught and turning over quite a bit faster than I really had expected. Let's just lock that in place using that helpful T key. 
Although it does look like we're slipping sideways. This thing uh, was actually is actually quite big. The interesting thing to note is that those are very heavy solid rocket boosters, and once I ditch those, we're not going to manage much more than 1G acceleration the rest of the trip, but if my math is correct and my flying is good, I should be able to take this thing all the way to orbit uh, on the thrust, even although we're not quite... We're not much more than the acceleration of the planet Kerbin's gravity. The head start that these boosters will give us should be enough to carry us with our momentum into orbit safely. With the wimpy thrust, we're almost getting ready to say goodbye to these boosters. Bye bye! Off you go, do your. Oh crap, okay. And bye bye to my main engine, I think. Okay, let's see what should we do here. Fire that. Let's bring ourselves clear of the debris here. I like how the separators are kind of trying to fly faster than us. Okay, we're now flying free of things. Um, this is managing half a G. This is not going to get us into orbit. Not that I ever thought it would, would but uh, at least we're clear of the debris field. Now we just need to figure out how to get these guys home safe. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. we're turning sideways. Okay, never mind. Let's just get them out of there and land this thing. Uh, okay. Ditch that, and okay, that's not so good either. We gotta somehow get in here. There's a little, there's a couple of engines that I'm supposed to use to kind of get us moving here. Okay, that's one of them. Nope, maybe not. Have we got it? Activate it. Activate. Thank you. Next one. Oh, activate. Uh, no, wait. We've only got one engine. I must have locked the gimbal in that. Yes. Gam. There we go. Look. So you're now getting a good idea of what this thing looks like. This is kind of embarrassing. This is clearly going to fall into the launch failure. Just a question, can I actually land this thing? Uh, I guess it's going to land in the ocean. I don't have enough fuel to move it anywhere else. Well, oh, yeah, turning around a little. Hope you guys enjoy the ride because you uh, are going for a swim. I hope you brought your swimsuits, guys, because, yeah, you are going to be in the middle of the the Kerblantic Ocean or whatever that is. I don't know. Okay, four parachutes should be enough to slow us. Let's ditch that. And I like how we ditch that and it falls away even though we're under a parachute. I I cannot wait for a point two three when I can make some of these parachutes actually open a little early. Although, I wonder whether that would tear the spacecraft apart. I'm kind of concerned that that middle section with all the instrumentation is uh, perhaps a little weak here. So I'm going to basically burn my engine to slow my descent. I do not want the parachutes to open and take this thing apart. I mean, honestly, not that it matters because the crew is probably going to be safe, but you know, maybe I want to do some science or something. This is all about investigation. We, some people, you know, NASA, they would use boilerplates to test this stuff. No, we use a fully crewed capsule because that's how we roll. In fact, Testing, testing is what happens when something goes wrong and we figure that we should have tested it first. Okay, getting very close. These things are going to open at about 500 meters and we want to make sure the thing doesn't fall apart. Getting the speed... 100 and 110 and... Okay, yes. Clean separation of the capsule. Oh, no. Okay, um... I... I did not quite expect that to happen. Um, <laughs> I th we are actually still going down at about 5 meters per second. This thing is oscillating quite a lot. Um, it let maybe I can drive this whole thing down into the ocean. That would be kind of funny. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of wobbling there and the parachutes are pulling it back and forth. This is the weirdest landing ever and I, I'm glad that I record these things for you, you guys. You know, sometimes amidst all the planning, things go wrong, and they go wrong in ways which I cannot anticipate, <laughs> or I did not anticipate. Look, we're kind of wobbling this thing off here. Let's let's kill this, kill the. Come on, use T, use the stability control here. Try to stop it wobbling. Hundred meters up, and we're actually slowing our oscillation. There, look. Come on, get it straight up. We're going to have a nice flat landing. We don't want to go sideways. Okay, two meters per second, and we are actually slowing. So here's the problem. Because that engine is on the other stage, um, 
Okay, no, we're not wanting target velocity. We're not wanting orbital velocity. That's not good either. We're still descending, but because that engine is on the other stage, we can't actually change the thrust on it. And I'm worried. I think we're going to actually not land in the water. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's funny. Like, our, our parachutes are starting to go the other way because we actually have burned enough fuel. We made it to 16 meters above the ocean. I'm kind of hoping that I would be able to bring the instrumentation down safely and then we could, you know, I don't know, do some science. Oh, look. Oh, well, never mind. We ditched it all. The Kerbals are here, though. They, uh, no doubt, collected all sorts of fascinating scientific data in that unplanned test. Hey, little guy, I shall call him Squishy, and he shall be mine, and he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. And I should clarify, after episode 22, they're probably talking about some sort of sea life. Perhaps even the progenitor of the mighty Kraken. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's redesign that rocket and try again. And we have the same group back again for another try. They are clearly trusting fools. Or maybe they just realize that they're in the right hands. Anyway, they are riding their giant controlled explosion skywards like a veritable arrow being directed at the heart of some sky deity. Accelerating upwards at about 2G on powered by those epic solid rocket motors. Now we have uh, doctored those solid rocket motors up somewhat. We have covered them all over with separatrons, hoping that they will be blasted clear from the central core and not damage that engine and leave us once again falling towards the planet with barely enough uh, acceleration to do anything about it. Seriously, I think it'll work this time. We have gone to town with the separatrons. You see them there? So we've got se uh, those nose cones include separatron rockets as well and then we have extra ones on the side. This is probably going to work just fine. And then the question is whether the rocket will actually get us the rest of the way into orbit. I tend to overbuild these things. We should have plenty of spare fuel. Go! Oh, look at that. Whoa, no! Oh, hey, made it. I thought they were going to slide back and hit each other. Anyway, onwards to orbit. Yes, old me was obviously being very flowery. So, interesting thing about this rocket is the amount of thrust is actually ridiculously low. Uh, and I didn't really design it that way, but it just means that the thrust to weight ratio very early on when it hasn't burned all its fuel is actually less than 1G. But we have more than enough acceleration that if we fly a path which is you know, sufficiently conservative, we should manage to actually take this thing upwards and into orbit. Uh, you notice that we're actually getting our velocity vector very close to the horizon, but we're still accelerating. We're actually accelerating at more than 1G now, so things are looking good, except that we're about to burn out and then switch to a stage which has about half a G acceleration. So just as we're getting above 1G, we uh, switch to an engine which doesn't give me nearly enough thrust. And actually, I am now starting to fall back towards the planet Kerbin. Um... So I'm really trying to compensate. That's why I'm kind of burning at 45 degrees. Now, I if you look at the trajectory of the space shuttle, it's actually, depending upon the launch, some of them do actually fall back to the planet Earth just a little. But, uh, you know, because they have enough velocity, they are able to ultimately translate that to horizontal speed and escape upwards into the atmosphere and ultimately uh, bring themselves to orbit. As this thing will do, and you see, ultimately, I uh, I am doing this, and now I'm actually what I see I'm doing is I'm burning it more or less ninety degrees because I want to keep my I want to keep my periaps low and keep my apoaps high. Now ready for the great reveal. Look at that. This is the spacecraft. It's going to land in the planet. I actually saw that earlier, didn't you? Assuming that I actually posted my bad run, that would be. Well, I did say I would post bad runs. So yeah, um, this is it. what it looks like in space when it's not crashing. Look at it. It's got room for three. It's got a big engine there that should land on the planet Duna just fine and hopefully should lift off. We actually have a sensor there which we can use to find Keithane. We have some experiments. We have some lights. We have everything we need for a visit to Duna. We just need to dock it to the ship, but that will be in uh, the next episode. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.